Hello students of grade 12 and Ms. K. Today, I will be discussing about street art. I am sure that most of you know what this genre of art is about. We see it every single day when we, for example, go to school. The students living in the capital city know that Jakarta is filled with paintings on public walls and bridges. I myself also encounter street art quite often since my neighborhood is also full of them. Or maybe if you go on a trip to cities like Berlin and New York, you'll find graffiti everywhere. In short, street art can be enjoyed worldwide. And we all agree that street art has become a huge part of our modern culture. But has it always been like this? How does street art gain popularity? And how does street art get accepted by the masses? You'll find out in this presentation. The name of this art genre explains itself, street art, which is visual art that is made on public areas and properties such as walls, set of buses, trains, trash bins, you name it. Street artists see the whole city as a blank canvas and would tag anything if they have the opportunity to do so. The works aren't registered as official works of art and are mostly, but not always, made by independent artists. Due to their independent, free, and rebellious nature, street art is also known as independent art and guerrilla art. Other names like neo-graffiti and post-graffiti are also associated with street art. Street art is nothing new. It traces back to the time of ancient Rome where Romans would write messages and draw gladiators they supported on the walls of houses. The Mayans in South America used to do something similar, which involved scribbling pictures of sports and the gods they worshipped. But today, we won't be discussing about the long history of street art. Our focus is a street art era that has made an impact to our culture today, the 20th century. It all started between the 1920s and the 1930s when the city of New York was filled with many gangs. They used to go around the city and tag the name of their group on the side of trains, buses, and walls. This activity was first admired later between the 1970s and 1980s, especially by the youth. Teenagers of that time started to grab spray cans and other painting materials to make graffiti art on public properties. At the same time, teenagers created a movement and made street art culture of the youth. These young people had different motives, but have the main intention to have their own voice. They take street art as an opportunity to make their art more recognized by the masses. While the movement was spreading, not everybody in the city was intrigued by the youth's artistic activity on the streets. The society then associated street art with vandalism. Though, as time passes, street artists started to gain recognition by professionals, art critics, and experts, starting from the 20th century and all the way to this day. You might be wondering, why do street artists paint on public property? Why not on canvases? Well, there are different motives that explain this. In total, there are three common motives. Number one, political motive. The political motive can be seen as a form of freedom of speech and a self-expression. Street artists usually express their thoughts and worry about social political issues, and they sometimes also go as far as critiquing the government. Number two, promotion. Here, artists very often promote health, environmental, and social awareness. Keith Haring, for example, did this a lot throughout his career. He made many murals and paintings that condemns the use of drugs and famously used the quote, crack is whack. As someone who was affected by AIDS, which he later died to in the age of 31, Haring also used to promote AIDS awareness. Other than social reasons, artists, bands, and musicians also, also use public properties as platforms to stick their posters to inform people about their upcoming exhibition or concert. And lastly, number three, presence making. 
excuse me, sorry, present marking. Excuse me. This is probably the most well-known and even iconic motive of the genre. Many people would immediately think about the style when they hear street art. Street artists tag their stage names in unusual ways to mark their presence. They seek public recognition and just want to be known by the masses. Sometimes they also see presence marking as an opportunity to commercialize their art. An artist who has managed to successfully market his art through the graffiti in the 21st century is Brian Donnelly, or better known as Cause. It is common to associate street art with the destruction of public properties. This act is also called vandalism. The word vandalism originated from a barbaric tribe who were known as the Vandals. Back then, the Vandals would march into cities and destroy pub public properties. This explains the correlation between Vandals and street artists. Though street artists don't have the same approach if it comes to destroying the properties of the city. Besides from that, they also don't bring any harm towards citizens. Although street art is now more accepted, it is still commonly associated with vandalism. Street artists are also perceived as rebellious and provocative. Anybody who dares tagging walls, trains, and other public objects could be charged for vandalism. Due to this, many artists decided to create stage names. For example, Cause, Blade, Futura, to hide and protect their real identities in case they get hunted down by the police. Through time, after getting rejected by the public and art critics for a long time, street art has become mainstream and were displayed in art museums such as the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA. From that time on, art critics, professors, and professionals have accepted street art as contemporary art and a valid form of artistic self-expression. However, street art remains illegal in many countries and cities to this day. While the public have accepted street art, the government still doesn't. The legality and the acceptance of street art is still debatable. Street art has been popular since the 20th century, but its popularity has reached its peak very recently. In contrast to the past, the public's opinion on street art today has experienced a change. Back then, between the 1970s and 1980s, many people weren't pleased with the number of graffiti rising each day and art critics often talked poorly about street art. But what blurred people's hatred towards street art was the boundaries that street artists made. Many have decided to not tag on private property anymore since it distressed many citizens. And by the end of the 20th century, art critics and other professionals working in the field of art have become more progressive and started to appreciate street art. This resulted to many street artists being respected and recognized. Many of their works are even regarded as master masterpieces to this day. The popularity of street art is evident through the prices they were sold for in auctions showing how much rich art collectors want some of the works of specific street artists in their homes. Jean-Michel Basquiat, regarded as USA's most important Afro-American artist, made a painting labeled Untitled. It was sold in an auction for around $110.5 million. Keith Haring's Untitled painting was sold for $6.5 million, and Banksy one of the most famous and anonymous street artists of the 21st century sold his painting, titled Girl with a Balloon, for $1.2 million. Street art has made a huge contribution for our modern culture. This genre has brought influences to many aspects. Our creativity, our thought process, our opinion, and lifestyle. Street art has inspired the urban art genre with the usage of graffiti elements. Many people have even tried to make street art more applicable for everyday life, starting from fitting street art into their living space. Street artists of the 20th and the 21st century have proven that everybody has a chance to make it big in the art world. This inspired a new generation of artists to take the same path as their role models. 
the image of street art has also changed recently. It is now recognized as an urban beautifier and a symbol of freedom and creativity. Whether you know this or not, street art has blended into our everyday life. Another reason to its rise of popularity is also due to its involvement in many of our daily essential needs. Street art can be often spotted in hip-hop and rap music, a genre that is highly inspired by it and immensely popular today, fashion through the popularity of street art-based brands like Supreme, Stussy, and Obey, and their collaborations with high and fast fashion brands like Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Uniqlo, in skateboarding, with the use of graffiti as the graphic underneath skateboards, on merchandises, on mugs, notebooks, binders, instruments, and posters, in galleries, the original paintings and photographs that are displayed there, and most definitely in public areas. Throughout this presentation, I mentioned quite a lot of street artists, and I'm pretty sure that some of you might be wondering how they look like. So, here are the pictures of five of the most notable artists mentioned. And here are the artworks of the five artists. And these are the sources I used to assemble this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any question concerning this presentation, you may ask me through chat. Once again, thank you and goodbye.